Well, welcome and merry night before Christmas as we gather together to, to praise God. And, and to, to took, the goal today is to kind of look at the big picture, to, to see where it started and where it's going. Because if you realize that in the dawn of creation, God provided this perfect world. There was no strife. There was no conflicts. Man and woman had a direct connection with God. It says that they walked with him in the cool of the day. Animals and humankind, they had no fear of each other. I love the idea of being able to pet a tiger <laughs> and not worry about getting my hand bit off. There was this unique harmony and peace throughout God's world. And God had one requirement, just one expectation. Obey him. Because he, he knows what is best. Don't walk away from your creator. Don't, don't turn aside to the, to the right or to the left. Yet with perfection all around them, with, with this ability to have this communion with God, the man and the woman chose a desire to be like God. They wanted to be his equal. They, they fi figured, as the deceiver said, that they, they would have all the knowledge that they needed if they just turned away from God's command. And they chose the deception rather than the clear, loving voice of God. And the connection was gone, if you will, that separation, that, that, that death. Humankind separated from God. Perfection lost. Yet even in that loss, even in that turning away from God, God offered hope. The one who caused Adam and Eve to question God's motives shed innocence for a lie. And to the deceiver, God said, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. God knew the choices that Adam and Eve would make even before they made that choice. And at the same time, he knew what he had to do to draw us back to himself. That we would go astray, but God had a plan to bring us back. Isaiah seven fourteen. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The promise was made from the foundation of the world, the scripture tells us. Yet it would be thousands of years before everything was in place and until the full measure of sin had been realized. And as humankind increased, sin and disobedience increased. Look at our world today. Mankind, we, sought to create our own gods. Might be money or fame or whatever, riches, all those things. And perfection was replaced by destruction. But there's always hope. The love of God would always make a way. Would you sing, would you stand if you're able as we sing a couple of songs? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and a ransom captive.
on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come oh come
spirit of hope, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. Go ahead and be seated, please. But when we consider hope, hope is still only a pipe dream unless there's something solid to grasp, something firm that you can hold on. It, it's that, that firm foundation, something that adds credibility to our hopes. I can hope for a white, white Christmas, but if I live in Florida, that hope is only a dream. What is true for faith? What is true for our hope? Hebrews 11, 1 through 3 and 6. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Why don't you remain seated as we sing these next songs? Blessing. 
wonderful to think about, to think in, in your past and think about the things that God has brought you through and, and recognizing that He has been faithful even when we aren't always. He's always there calling us back. And so when, when faith is, is grounded in this incredible reality that we celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, it, it's, a, it's a reality that in so many ways doesn't make sense. It, it's 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 easy, perhaps, to, to um, poke holes in it. Why and how would God, whom we turned away from, that we made the willing, willful decision to walk away, to, to disobey, to, to seek after things instead of think, seek after God, yet God would take the steps needed to bring us back into fellowship. He, he, would, he would make a way. God has a plan to, to bring back perfection that, that, quite frankly, we chose to ignore. Understanding and accepting the promises of God can only result in joy. Psalm 5, 11 through 12. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O oh Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Psalm 1611, you have made known to me the path of life. 
You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. If you're able, why don't we stand for these next two songs? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven. tell you there was a, a time I did an interim faster at a, at a church in another area and uh, we were singing that song joy to the world and uh, everybody looked like they were about to die they just all frowns on their face and I said when you're singing that song tell your face that you're happy <laughs> so I, I hope that you recognize that sometimes we treat this this night as a somber night but it, it is a time for rejoicing it is a time to recognize what we have in Christ that 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 gift that gives us a connection back with God. And so as we've been talking about hope, faith, and joy, th those three, those, those foundations, if you will, form a basis for an incredible peace. I if we have hope, if we have faith, we can have joy and we can have peace. No matter what comes your way, and, and, and the world is throwing things at us left and right, and I've said to people before, sometimes every generation has said that's been the worst. 
but it always seems like it's, it's being thrown at us. But no matter what comes your way, your hopes, if they're grounded in faith, a faith in a God, the God, who so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It is, it is that faith in that God that provides us comfort and it provides us promise. You, you see, if, if your faith is in God, if your faith is in his promise to redeem the fallen world that we read earlier from Genesis chapter 3, I will, you will strike his heel, but he will crush your head. You, you know the end of the story. You know how it's going to wind up, and you know that your hope is not in vain. So why don't you just stay seated as we sing these next two songs. The goodness, the goodness of 
my days in the goodness of Jesus. Oh, the goodness, the goodness of Jesus satisfied. throws at us, may it become what may, we can rest in the goodness of Jesus. Hope, faith, joy, and peace, those are the, the promises that, that bring us together every year to, to, to remember the birth of Christ. He, he's no longer a child, he's resurrected. But over the years, unfortunately, as, as probably all of you have realized, Christmas has been turned into a, a celebration without promise. The promise that maybe people are looking for is the promise for the best price on the gifts that they want to buy. The reason for the season is, is lost in the quest for things. If I could only get the Xbox or whatever is most popular today, I don't know. If only I could get the next thing, or my, my Christmas bonus would be even bigger, whatever those things are that we seek for, and we miss the reason of the promise that we have in Christ. And the joy isn't in the, the hope that we have in Christ. It's in getting through another year. And as I've said to this congregation many times before, the older I get, the faster the years go by. Let's get through one more year. For some, Christmas is a reminder of a loss of a loved one. And I always want to make sure I remember that because for some, Christmas isn't always so full of joy because they, they've lost a spouse, they've lost a, a parent, they've lost a child. As the song says, it says, um, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. It, it, it has a refrain and it says, And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Yet we have the promise. We have the promise of something bigger. In the weeks leading up to today, we, we lit each of these Advent candles, the candle of, of hope, of faith, of joy, of peace. And we looked at the scriptures to see the promise. The reason why that even in the midst of strife, even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of inflation, you, you name the list of things that are bothering you right now, our hope, our faith, our joy, and our peace can't be taken away. That, that song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, has a, 
an answering refrain. It says, then rang the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to all. But it all rests on the candle in the center, the promised Messiah, the light in the darkness. Henry, if you'd start turning off those, that'd be great. John 12, 46. Jesus said, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who, so that the one who believes in me should stay in darkness. As we, we get darker and darker here, I should have done this. You don't have to stay in the dark. You don't have to wallow in the, the loss of, of a promise. Jesus is the light of the world. That center candle that represents that light. And he came to finish the story, to provide us a way back to perfection. Perfection lost will be perfection regained. Separation from God will be healed. And the question that we must ask ourselves is, is there room in our hearts? Do we have the hope? Do we have the faith? Do we have the joy and do we have the peace because we know the promise of the light of the world? Do you believe that Christmas is a reminder of the gift that we have in Jesus Christ? Do you believe that, that Jesus, God with us, came to the world for a purpose, to, to, to redeem us, to, to bring us back into his fellowship, his birth, his life? his death, and yes, his resurrection, that all who believe shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jeremy and Jeff are going to light your candles, for they'll start at the edge here, and then if you just pass your light down as they, they go, as the, our worship team sings. keeper's door it was for this a child was born to save a world so cold and hollow a sleeping town they did not know the trying in a manger low a savior king who had no home has come to heal our sorrow at night. Do not fear the glory light. You are precious in his sight. God has come to raise the lowly. Is there room in your heart? Is there Every wrong will be made right. The road is straight, the burdens light. For in his hands he holds tomorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to rise? story. You can come as 
Contemplate that night, that special night so long ago as we sing Silent Night. candles but but don't let the candle blow out in your heart to make room in your heart for Jesus thank you Henry it's um it's so interesting how we can come together and then go our separate ways and forget the reason for the season Jesus Christ who came to pro provide salvation it, it's it's not just about believing because Jesus was a historic figure it's it's about receiving Yet to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. The devil believes and shudders, the scripture tells us. The difference is when we, we say, Lord, I, I know I've fallen short. I know that like all, I have turned away. And I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. So that when God looks at us, he doesn't see us. He, he sees the blood of the cross. And he sees the salvation and the righteousness that we don't have of our own but that God provided for us. Is there room in your heart? We're going to close with a song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and, and, and sing it like you're there and you're witnessing that incredible scene that the shepherds, the, the lowly of the lowest, were given the announcement of the King, the Savior of the world. So let's join together as we sing. The herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born Not 
I want to thank you for coming out in the cold. I'm glad we didn't have the snow, but we had the, the wind and the cold, so thank you for, for coming out. We still do plan to have a service tomorrow. It'll be a, a bit shorter service than usual, um, be more music and such and some reflections and things like that. If you're able, if you don't have things to, to take you out, we'd love to have you here. But, but Merry Christmas to all of you. There are cookies and uh, refreshments downstairs. Please feel free to grab a cookie or two. If you, if, you, if you have to run, grab a couple and run with them in your pocket. So have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming.